we're going to learn a new type of reaction called the redox. I'm going to show you how to balance it. It's a particular reaction because electrons move around or essentially the oxidation state is going to change for any given element. Whenever that happens, it's a redox. So if the oxidation state goes up or down, we encounter kind of redox. And this cannot be balanced using the traditional way, which is called by inspection, that you learned already. You have to use a different method. I'm going to teach you the half reaction method. Uh, I think it's the easiest. You might have learned a different way, but here goes my way. If you find a better way, that's totally fine. What you're going to do to balance that is to split the reaction uh, into half reactions. So you're basically going to split it in half and you're going to put likes with likes. What does that mean? That means uh, whatever matches in the reaction, kind of like Sesame Street, you put those two things together. And you'll see me do an example. But if you see manganese in the products, manganese in the reaction, you put that those two together in a half reaction. If you see two nitrogens, you know, nitrogens together, you put those together. Okay? So you split them up into half reactions. What we're going to do is balance them separately, side by side, and then put them back together. It is actually going to turn out, though it adds steps, it's going to turn out to be the easiest way. After you split into half reactions, then you need to uh, balance the half reactions. And to balance them, there's a four step method to follow. And so let's go through this four step method. Always use these four steps. Sometimes you'll be able to skip a step if it doesn't apply. But sometimes we use all four steps. Whatever you find that is not oxygen or hydrogen. Um, so you look through your reaction. You find, okay, there's some things that are not oxygen or hydrogen. You balance those by inspection. That's the typical way that we've done before. So for example, if there's two iodines on one side and one on the other, you make make it so they have equal numbers, so you put a 2 in front of the place where it has 1. Step 2. Step 2, you balance the oxygen. So in step 2, you're going to balance oxygen. How do you balance oxygen? You're going to balance that with liquid water. They might ask, isn't that kind of random that oh, we're just adding water to balance the oxygen? In fact, this is totally fine. Because this chapter is about reactions in solution, and all these redox reactions will happen in solution. So there is plenty of water to go around. Then the next step, you're going to notice you've just added hydrogens whenever you add water into your reaction. So by adding hydrogens, now in step three, you'll have to fix the hydrogens. Because you'll probably have too many, more than you want. How do you fix hydrogens? you fix it with H plus aqueous. So, with your H plus aqueous, you're wondering why do I add that? Well, the reason you'll have to add that, or that you are able to add that, is because if you have an acidic solution, there's plenty of H plus to go around, because by definition, acids donate H plus. So there's plenty of that to go around in an acidic solution. And step four, you balance the charge. How do you balance a charge? You balance a charge with electrons. Electrons don't have a state, they're just little tiny particles, and uh, there's plenty of them to go around, believe me, in a solution. So you're just going through a technique to balance what is already balanced in a solution. So this here is your half reaction balancing method. You need these four steps to be locked and loaded in your brain. Okay, so those are four steps. After you do that, you take your half reactions and recombine them. So you're putting your half reactions back together in one reaction. Let me write that down as well. So combine your half reactions and simplify the
probably be some simplification that will happen. You'll see that as we do examples. Whenever you combine reactions, you might remember this term from last chapter. These are called simultaneous reactions or consecutive reactions. So that's why we learned about simultaneous reactions, because here you're actually going to use that concept and put together reactions. What you need to know is what's your intermediate. Your intermediate is the electron. Okay? You can't contain those electrons, put them in a jar, and because of that, that's considered our intermediate. So you must cancel your intermediate when you're combining the half reactions. There must not be any electrons in your final answer. Okay, so after you do that, you combine them, you simplify, you do your thing. You have just come up with your acidic conditions. answer. So now you've just solved the problem in what's called acidic conditions. And the problem will specify to solve in acidic or basic conditions. If it doesn't specify, solve it for acidic conditions. Just assume that. Now, um, and you notice in acidic conditions because you added H plus over here. Now, what do we want to do? Well, you could also be asked for the basic conditions answer. If you ask for that, there's a couple more steps. And again, this is just the way I do it. Uh, you find a different way that you like, go for it. What you do first is find the number of H plus uh, aqueous ions. So in your reaction, there'll be 1, 5, 10, whatever. You find that number. You just count them up. And they'll be on one side. They'll be all together. Once you find that number, your next step is to add say, the same amount of OH minus. So if there's 8 OH, 8 H plus, say in your reactants, you add the same amount, 8 OH minuses, to both sides. You've got to add to both sides to keep it mathematically sound. You might wonder, why are we adding OH minus? It's so random. Well, a base is OH minus donor. And so if you're in basic solution, there's plenty of them to go around. This happens naturally. We're just finding this method is just a constructed way to get about what reactions naturally do. So, next thing is to, you have to know something. Put another arrow. Know the following. You have to know that H plus plus OH minus, I'll just put it equals here, but really it goes to liquid water. We'll put some stars by this, or I'll put it in brackets. So when you add the OH minus, it's going to react with a H plus. It's going to form one water for every one of the OH minuses that you added. Okay? So one H plus plus two OH minus equals one water. All right, let's continue. We're almost done with all our steps. The next thing you want to do, I'll kind of go this way since I have not that much room, is to simplify. They will, uh, I would say, almost de definitely be some things to simplify. And then finally, after you have just simplified, you have what is known as the basic conditions answer. So if you go through all that, you have just found your basic conditions answer. So yes, it does take more work to get there. You gotta go through a lot more routes. But those are all the steps. Start with the, to balance it, you split the half reactions, you go through your four steps for the half reactions, you put them back together just like you would simultaneous reactions. There's your acidic conditions answer. To go to the basic conditions, again, you add the number of H pluses, you find the number of H pluses and add the same amount of OH minus. You use this little formula, simplify, and there's your basic conditions answer.